All right, finally, it is list season. I did not think I would ever be able to even make these lists because of how frequently artists were releasing new music, but here we are. You guys might have seen that I just posted my Billboard Hot 100 list video, and now we're on to the album videos. And as you can tell, the first of them is gonna be the 13 albums that I hated in 2020. I've mentioned this before, but I like to call this list albums that I hated as opposed to worst albums because personally, I'm more of a subjective critic than an objective of critic and I feel like calling these albums the worst would indicate that they are objectively the absolute worst when in reality they're just the ones that I hated the most. Same thing goes when you see my loved list. The albums on that list are not the absolute best records of 2020. They're just the ones that I love the most. So with that in mind it's time to jump into the hated list and while 2020 was a great year for music and there were a lot of albums that I really loved there were quite a few that I absolutely hated. It felt like this year every album that I reviewed was either excellent or awful. Not literally, but you get the point. So this list comprises 13 records that I gave an awful rating to or would have given an awful rating to in a full review this year. As per usual, this list is just my opinion. Maybe you will disagree. Maybe you'll agree. As long as you do so respectfully, that's fine. And if you want, you can leave your lists down in the comments below. So with that out of the way, let's get into the records that I hated this year. And coming in at number 13, we have KSI's Dissimulation. KSI seems like a decent guy, but this record was just too standard for its own good. It doesn't fall into the trappings that you'd expect a YouTuber turned rapper to fall into, but with how blatantly forgettable it is, that might actually double as a bad thing. At number 12, we have Lil Yachty's latest album, Lil Boat 3. Lil Yachty really just sounds like he doesn't care on this thing. Much of the oddball charm that made his early music so appealing is long since gone, and he's reverted to giving lackluster performances over flavorless beats. It feels like Yachty didn't improve on the bad sides of records like Lil Boat 2 or Nothing to Prove, but rather he just tripled down on what made them so bad. Lil Yachty hasn't had the biggest downfall of the SoundCloud rappers, but his has been pretty sad to witness. At number 11, we have Lil Wayne with his new album, Funeral. Easily one of Wayne's most forgettable records, this thing is way too long and his inability to chop down really hurts the project. It severely lacks the high points of something like the Carter Five, and it feels very run of the mill compared to some of his best works. At number 10, perhaps one of the biggest disappointments of the year, we have the 1975 with notes on a conditional form. A lot of artists I once enjoyed have taken huge tumbles, but the 1975's drop in quality has been easily the most disappointing. How did the group go from making such a punchy, fun album like I Like It When You Sleep to making a total snooze fest like this? It's a bloated mess that doesn't have anywhere near the same charisma or excitement as the group's previous music. At number 9, Joyner Lucas comes in with his album ADHD. This record may have had the worst rollout of 2020. Nine of the 18 tracks on here were released prior to the album and three of the other songs were skits. There was very little meaningful new material here and whether new or not, much of it was generic hibbity skibbity bibbity lyrical miracle spiritual individual in your swimming pool rap that lacked meaningful lyricism, interesting instrumentation, or a focused theme. Honestly, it's pretty sad. At number eight, we have Nav and Wheezy with Emergency Tsunami. At number seven, we have Nav's Good Intentions. And at number six, we have Nav's Brown Boy 2. Really based on the sheer volume of terrible music that he released this year, Nav should honestly be number one on this list. This dude is literally in his own tier of laziness. It should not be possible to put out as much bad music as Nav does on a consistent basis, but lo and behold, here we are. I'd say this dude needs a break and a creative recharge, but I don't think you can recharge something that you never had in the first place. At number five, we have Party Next Door with his latest album, Party Mobile. This was one of the biggest slogs of an album in 2020. Party Next Door has had a few cool Drake features, but on this album, he literally does nothing interesting. Everything about the record is a crashing bore, and even his vocals, the one interesting thing about him, aren't even that exciting. Given how long he made his fans wait for this project, I don't think it's wrong to feel insulted. At number four, we have DaBaby with Blame It On Baby. We all know the joke by now that DaBaby makes the same song over and over, and unfortunately, that rings true on this project. Boring production, repetitive flows, disgusting lyrics, Lyricism, hideous attempts at singing. There's nothing that really makes the album worth remembering. At number three, we have Trippy Red with Pegasus. This album genuinely had no business being 26 tracks in 74 minutes, and throughout it, Trippy just sounds checked out. There's really no inspiration here on the production or the performances, and Trippy's descent from being an interesting SoundCloud voice to a complete laughing stock has been disappointing to watch. At number two, we have Sam Hunt with Southside. I notoriously posted a review of this album 
album where I didn't say a single word, so here's a few short words about it. This is a shallow bastardization that sounds like it doesn't give a shit at all. It's so unbelievably lazy and I'm blown away by the fact that it somehow took multiple years for this to be conceived. Everything about it is absolutely gross. And of course, at our number one spot, the album that I hated the most in 2020, it probably won't be much of a surprise, it's gonna be Green Day with their latest album, Father of All Motherfuckers. As much shit music as 2020 graced us with, I don't think anything else disgraced my ears as much as this train wreck. This record is a complete crock of shit in every reasonable aspect, from the basic instrumentals to the mind-numbing vocals. Green Day really took the fall and decided to release what will be one of the decade's worst albums in 2020's second month, and this record is a total embarrassment to the legacy of a band that's put out plenty of great music in the past. Let's just flush these albums out of our brains as fast as we can, and much like this shithole of a year, forget they ever happened as best as we possibly can. So yeah, that's the list of albums that I hated in 2020. I apologize if my descriptions weren't all that long, but I didn't want this video to drag on pointlessly. As always though, these are just my opinions on these albums. What were your most hated records of 2020? What were the ones that I missed? What were the ones that you agreed on? You can give me a top five, top 10, however big of a list of albums you can make that you hated in 2020. Leave them down in the comments. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, no big deal. I totally understand. If you guys want to support my passion for content creation by subscribing to my OnlyFans where I create exclusive music review and poetry content for $4.99 a month, the link to that is also in the description. Again, it's no big deal if you can or don't want to. I totally understand and I appreciate anyone that's able to. And now that we've gotten through the hated list, next up is going to be the list of albums that I loved in 2020. That will probably be uploaded shortly after this video, so stay tuned for that. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Peace.